Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's learn how to build a PC. Alright, so this video has been a long time coming. So I've been saying for quite a while now that I'll be doing one of these and finally it's time to make this video. So this video, I'm not exactly going to teach you how to build a PC, rather I'm going to teach you how to learn to build a PC. So it sounds a bit complicated, but let's get straight to it. So here's what you're going to need. Basically, you need a video tutorial. In my case, I'm going to use one by Austin Evans and another one by C4E Tech. So if you haven't seen these, these guys are awesome. I'll leave links in the description and in the i button. Definitely do check them out. The next thing you'll need is pictures of all the parts that go into the build. So that's basically your processor, your motherboard, your RAM, your graphics card, your hard drive, your power supply, your cabinet, and I think that's pretty much it. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to look at the tutorial and then we're going to take the pictures and figure out exactly what's going on. So let's start right off. So as you can see in the video, the first step that we do is take your power supply and slide it into the back of the cabinet. So again, looking at the pictures here, as you can see the back side of the cabinet, you can see that vent there that is meant for your power supply. And obviously your power supply slides right in. Then you just take the screws and then screw it in using the four screw holes given there. Simple, right? Now placing the cabinet aside, we move on to the motherboard. So pull the motherboard out of the anti-static bag, being careful, holding it only by the plastic parts because you don't want to damage it. Then you take your processor. So this is our processor and that is the slot where it fits in. So the simple way to do is, is there's a latch on there, just open the latch, line the notches up with the triangle on the processor and on the motherboard, just place the processor in there, latch it back on and you're good to go. Then we install the heatsink. Now AMD and Intel does this a bit differently. So the way it works is basically there are four screws that line up with the four holes around the processor. Just place the heatsink in there. Now if it's an AMD processor, it'll have a latch, just one latch that will just latch down and that's it. In case of the Intel heatsink, you'll have four notches on all four sides and as you can see, you just press all four of them down and you should be good to go. Once you install your heatsink, take the cable running from the heatsink and plug into the port that says CPU fan. You can see right here in the picture where it is located. Depending on your motherboard, it may have a different location, but it'll be very close to your processor. Now that's pretty much the only wiring that we're going to do now. The rest of the wiring will be done after we install all the parts. That will be a separate video, so go ahead and subscribe for that right now. Once we're done with our processor, we move on to the next component, that is the RAM. Again, this is fairly simple to install. As you can see two thirds down the way, there's a small gap. Line that up exactly with the RAM slot on the processor. Now, if you have the right RAM, by which I mean DDR3 RAM for a DDR3 motherboard and a DDR4 RAM for a DDR4 motherboard, this should line up perfectly. Just open the two notches on the side, place the RAM back in and the notches will close on by itself. Now, the next step is where we install the motherboard into the cabinet. But before we do that, we need to get the IO shield that comes with your motherboard. You can find that in the box. So basically you need to line up the IO shield with the back of the cabinet. Now make sure you don't get this the other way around. A simple way to do it is just place your motherboard in, line it up and see how you need it. Generally, a good rule of thumb is that the audio ports will go downward. Now it will be a little fiddly, but just don't be afraid. Just push it a little bit and you should be fine. Then we have the brass standoffs. So basically your motherboard should never exactly be flat with the cabinet. You need to have it at a certain height, which is why you install these standoffs. Now some cabinets come with those pre-installed, but again, they're very easy to install. Just check where your motherboard screw holes line up with the cabinet holes and place the brass standoffs there. Then simply place the motherboard down onto the brass standoffs and screw the motherboard in using the screw holes. Now for a graphics card, we have the PCIe slots on the motherboard that you can see right here. Also on the cabinet, you have these two PCIe slots that you need to pop out. For most of the cabinets, you'll probably have to screw those out, but for some of them, you actually have to push them back out and pull it out. Either way, just get them empty, then line up your graphic card perfectly, because it only goes in one way. Just push it in and then screw the graphic card into the cabinet. And that's pretty much it, your graphic card is installed. And to the last part, the hard drive. Again, this installs fairly simply. Now, there are two ways that you can go. Some cabinets have a cage straight away, where you got to put the hard drive in, hold it up as you're lining it up and screw it in while others have a tray. So basically you take the tray out, place the hard drive in and push the tray back in. So when you're actually building it and if you ever have any doubts, please go and refer to the manuals that come with your motherboard, with your cabinet and the, all the other parts because they almost have all the instructions that you need in there. It's not really that tough to understand. 
So that was pretty much it for the installation of the parts. Now the wiring is a bit tough, but we'll get to that in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. If you found this helpful, let me know in the comments. Also, if you know a better way or some useful tips and tricks, leave those in the comments as well. Share this with a friend who you think would also benefit from it. And definitely do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.